this is Jen from Winrose Fiber Studio. Today let's crochet the Regensburg scarf. This is a triangle scarf that has built-in ruffles and a fringe. For this project I am using Karen's Macchiato Cakes. I just need one skein. This is a bulky weight yarn and with it I'm using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. I also have a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a ruler which is quite important in this one, and though I'm only showing one stitch marker, I recommend that you have seven or eight on hand. To begin your project, you need to make a decision about how long you would like your fringe to be. Your beginning tail should be double the length of your fringe plus 5 inches or so for finishing. For a 5 inch fringe, I'm beginning with a tail that's just over 15 inches. Let's jump into row 1. For row 1, you'll chain 3 and then you'll work a half double crochet into the third chain from your hook. Remember half double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. When you're done, go ahead and mark this half double crochet. That's all there is to row one. For row two, you'll chain two, and here comes our built-in fringe. You're going to measure off your fringe length. It's going to be double the length of the actual length you want for your fringe. So I'm measuring off 10 inches because I want a five inch fringe. And then I'm placing about one twist per inch into this yarn in the direction of the ply. When I release the tension, the yarn should backspin on itself all the way up to the hook. When I'm happy with that spring, I'm going to yarn over back to front, around the hook, hold the twist in place, turn my yarn. So I'm basically just doing a yarn over while holding that twist in place. And then we're going to be working into our marked stitch. Into the stitch, we're going to work a half double crochet increase. This simply means to place two half double crochets into this stitch. And because this is the only stitch, row two is now complete. We can remove the stitch marker. For row three, we're going to chain two and turn. We'll be working a half double crochet in each stitch across. There are only two stitches, so here's our first one. And our last stitch is worked into our fringe yarn. If you pull this apart a little bit, you can see that there is a thread in front and a thread in back that is anchored in place by this little loop. When you work this half double crochet, you'll be working your yarn over and going underneath the thread in front and the thread just behind it. When you complete that stitch, you can open up the fringe yarn and using your pointer finger, rotate it back in the opposite direction. The yarn will naturally ply and hold this shape and you'll have a cute little fringe. I forgot to do it while I was filming, but also go ahead and mark that half double crochet. Begin row four by chaining two, and now we're going to make another fringe. So go ahead and measure your yarn, and now you can twist that yarn. You'll see that as I twist, I'm kind of separating my hands, and that's just so that the yarn doesn't get stuck to itself. Remember, you'll need about one twist per inch of yarn. Now it's time to yarn over, holding that twist in place. Here's me discovering that I forgot to mark the stitch, but it's right there. And into that very first stitch, we're going to work a half double crochet increase. Once again, this means to place two half double crochets into this first stitch. We'll complete this row by working a half double crochet in the next stitch for a total of three stitches. For rows 5 through 26, you'll be repeating rows 3 and 4 in that order. You'll gain one stitch on each even row. Welcome back. You should be getting really comfortable with your fringe, and now we're going to add some ruffles. For row 27, we're going to chain 2 and turn. We'll work a half double crochet in each of the next 7 stitches. Go ahead and mark the 7th half double crochet, and now we're going to make the small ruffle. To do so, chain 4, and you'll see that I'm sort of holding on to that first chain because then we're going to yarn over and work a double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook. To make a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two loops twice. 
With our small ruffle made, we're going to half double crochet in the next stitch. Go ahead and mark this one as well. It'll make it so much easier to find when you're working back in the next row. And now you're going to half double crochet in each stitch across with that last stitch being in the fringe yarn and completing the fringe. As I crochet, I just want to share that it is intentional that I chained four before our double crochet in the small ruffle. It is typical to work a chain three before a double crochet, but my goal with the small ruffle is to generate two loops that are not exactly the same size. Here we are at the end of row 27, working our last half double crochet, and now we can finish off this fringe. And this time I remembered to mark my last half double crochet before moving on to row 28. For row 28, you'll chain two, measure and twist your fringe yarn, I'm starting to speed up this process, but you can always reduce the playback speed if you'd like to see it in regular time. Here's our half double crochet increase, and now we're crocheting across this row. And this is when it's very helpful to have those stitch markers. Having stitch markers before and after the ruffle just make those stitches easy to find. You're going to skip right over the ruffle and work into those stitches. And then when you're done, make sure that your ruffle is pushed forward facing this side of the fabric. When you're working your even rows, the right side of your scarf is facing. Now that we have navigated the stitches before and after the small ruffle, we can half double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across to complete row 28 which has a total of 15 stitches. Here we have a look at our fabric with one small ruffle. And you can see that there's two little loops that make up the ruffle. One's a little bit longer than the other. Now we'll move on to row 29, where we'll chain two and turn. We'll begin this row by working a half double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. After the seventh stitch, go ahead and mark that one with a stitch marker. And now we're going to work a medium ruffle. To do this, chain five. You can see I'm holding on to the first chain. And then we're going to work a treble. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, three times. And now we'll work a half double crochet in the next stitch. And we'll mark this stitch. And then you can carry on and finish this row by working a half double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across. A little side note, as I crochet, just like the small ruffle, the medium ruffle is designed so that the loops are two different sizes. Finish your fringe, and this row will have 15 stitches in all. For row 30, you're going to chain two, measure and twist your fringe yarn, When you're done, yarn over holding that twist in place and work your half double crochet increase in the first stitch. And then you half double crochet in each stitch across. When you get to that ruffle, that first stitch marker, you'll work a half double crochet in this stitch and then you can remove that stitch marker. It might be easier to push the ruffle towards the back. I actually think it's kind of easier to work in the next stitch. If I push those ruffle loops back and then I go into the stitch this way, and then when I'm done, I can just 
encourage those loops to come back forward and remove that stitch marker. Now all I need to do is half double crochet in each stitch across until I complete this row which has a total of 16 stitches. It looks like the light is changing in my video but on row 31 we're going to chain two and turn and half double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. I marked that seventh one and here comes the large ruffle. This time we're going to chain six and yes I'm holding on to that first chain because now we're going to work a double treble. I'm going to yarn over three times, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, one, two, three, four times. Those are very tall stitches. And now we can yarn over and half double crochet in the next stitch. Let's mark this half double crochet so it's easy for us to find. And then finish off this row. Row 31 has 16 half double crochets in all. The stitch count for the odd numbered rows does not include the ruffles. It's just the number of half double crochets. The large ruffle is also designed to make two different sized loops. Okay, I feel like we're really flying now. Onto row 32, we chain two, measure and twist our fringe yarn. We hold that twist in place as we yarn over and turn and work our half double crochet increase into the first stitch. And now we can half double crochet in each stitch across. We will always skip those ruffles and encourage the ruffles to come forward. Also, we'll always gain one stitch on the even numbered rows because of that half double crochet increase. Row 32 has a total of 17 half double crochets. The idea behind starting with a small ruffle and then a medium and finally moving on to large ruffles is so that our ruffled rows will gradually emerge from our fabric. We're finishing up row 32 and another thing that I wanted to point out is be careful that when you're working around these ruffles that your stitch size stays consistent. It could be very easy to have the stitch on the other side of the ruffle be a little bit on the large side, so just really focus on your tension. Now that you are a ruffle making pro, for rows 33 through 40, you'll repeat rows 31 and 32 in that order. Here we are on row 41 where we'll introduce our second row of ruffles. So you're going to chain two and turn. And we'll work a half double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Let's keep those stitch markers handy and go ahead and mark the seventh. And now we're going to make our large ruffle. Remember that's a chain six and then double treble in the sixth chain from your hook. Half double crochet in the next stitch marking this one and then we'll half double crochet six more times. So we have a total of seven half double crochets between our ruffles. I'm going to mark this seventh one and now we're going to work a small ruffle again. So we're just chaining four and then we're going to work a double crochet in that four stitch from our hook. And now we half double crochet in the next stitch and we'll mark this one. And then we finish off our row as usual. Then we have row 42. Our even rows are always our increase rows for the first half of the scarf. 
and I'll let you follow the directions across. Row 42 has a total of 22 half double crochets. For row 43, we're going to chain 2 and turn, half double crochet in the next 7 stitches. Mark that 7th stitch, then you'll work your large ruffle. Half double crochet in the next stitch and mark that stitch as well. Then half double crochet in the next 6 stitches. There are a total of 7 half double crochets between ruffles. I'm marking that last stitch before I make my medium ruffle. I do so by chaining 5 and then working a treble into the 5th chain from my hook. And then we have double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across completing our fringe. Row 43 has a total of 22 half double crochets. On to row 44, you know the drill, so I'm speeding on through it. Row 44 has a total of 23 stitches. And now our second row of ruffles. Here's our first row, and the second row has a small and a medium. And in our next row, we're going to graduate to a large ruffle. So let's chain two and turn. So it's seven stitches, and then a large ruffle and then it's seven more stitches and another large ruffle and then just finishing off by working half double crochets across and completing that fringe. Row 45 has a total of 23 half double crochets. I think double trebles are kind of fun, so I, I hope you're enjoying making your ruffles. Getting to do something a little unusual with a project is always fun. Here's row 46 where we chain two, create our twisted yarn, and then work our way back across increasing in that first stitch. Remember to encourage your ruffles to come forward and row 46 will have a total of 24 half double crochets in all. Now I didn't put stitch markers in the previous row because I kind of wanted to show you how to find those stitches if there are no stitch markers involved. The space for your hook is just to the left of the stitch. There's the stitch and there's the hole that your hook will go into. I love popping the ruffle forward. Let's look at the next one. Remember also just count. So this is the seventh stitch. We skip over that ruffle and there's sort of an opening where the ruffle is attached that first chain and we're going to be working we don't we don't work into the chain we work into the stitch right next to that pop out that ruffle and then we can complete this row if you're comfortable with identifying stitches you may really prefer to avoid the stitch markers and just cruise right along on the other hand, stitch markers make it very easy to find those stitches, so if you happen to be a little bit newer to crochet, I highly recommend them. 
Now that we have established our second row of ruffles, for rows 47 through 54, you'll repeat rows 45 and 46 in that order. I wonder if you can guess what's coming next. We've got two rows of ruffles going. Yep, you guessed it. Row 55, we're going to introduce a third row of ruffles. I am speeding along and working my first and second large ruffles on row 55. Remember there are seven half double crochets in between each row of ruffles and that is true for the third row as well. So I just finished my second large ruffle. I work seven more half double crochets. I'm going to mark that last one and now we're going to work a small ruffle again. So chain four and double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook and then finish off this row half double crocheting in the remaining stitches and completing your fringe. Row 55 has 28 half double crochets in all. Here we are at row 56. Work this per usual. This row will have 29 stitches in all. So we'll have three rows of ruffles and there'll be seven stitches between each row of ruffles. Here's the first small ruffle and now we need to build on that. So this time we're going to make a medium ruffle. I'm going to cruise right on through row 57 until we get to that third row of ruffles because by now you have got this down. You know the drill. I'm also managing the length of this video while knowing that there'll be times when you need to pause. Here we are on the third row of ruffles and I'm chaining five and working a treble into the fifth chain from the hook for our medium ruffle and then we can finish off this row which contains 29 half double crochets. Row 58, this is our even row where we're increasing. So we measure out that fringe and work that first increase and then half double crochet across. This row has a total of 30 half double crochets. And now with row 59, we've got all three of our ruffle rows up to large ruffles. So you'll work seven stitches, make a large ruffle, seven stitches, make a large ruffle seven stitches, make a large ruffle, and then half double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across and complete your fringe. Row 59 will have a total of 30 half double crochets. Now all three ruffle rows are created making large ruffles. So for rows 60 through 65, repeat rows 58 and 59 in that order. At row 66, we are midway through our scarf project and we're going to begin to decrease one stitch on every even row. So in that first stitch, instead of working a half double crochet increase, we're going to begin our decrease. So yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. So when you work a half double crochet decrease, you're doing that over the first two stitches in the row. With that information, you have everything you need to know to work rows 67 
through 72. You'll repeat rows 65 and 66 in that order, and for your convenience, I've written them out below. Now that we've just completed row 72, we're going to start finishing off this lower row of ruffles. So just as we started with a small and then a medium and then a large, we're going to end by going from a large to a medium to a small. So for row 73, we'll chain two and turn. We'll work those seven half double crochets. Then we'll make our first large ruffle. Then we'll work seven more half double crochets. And we'll make our second large ruffle. Then we have seven more half double crochets. And here we are at our third row of ruffles. This time we're making a medium. So we're going to chain five. And then we'll work a treble in the fifth chain from our hook. And then we can finish off this row half double crocheting in each of the remaining stitches across and completing our fringe. Row 73 will have 29 half double crochets. When you reach row 74, you'll chain two, measure and twist your fringe yarn, yarn over and hold that twist. Remember, we're working a half double crochet decrease, and then we're working half double crochets across the remaining stitches. Here's our scarf after completing row 74. And I just kind of wanted to hold it up at an angle so you can really see how it makes a difference to start from small and work our way up and then to work our way back down again. The ruffled rows really sort of emerge from the fabric and then work their way back in. Grooving right along to row 75, we're going to chain two and turn and we'll work those seven half double crochets to the first large ruffle. And then we'll work seven more half double crochets to the second row of ruffles, which is also a large ruffle. And then we'll work our third set of seven half double crochets to the third row of ruffles. And this time it's just getting a small ruffle. Chain four and double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And then we can finish off this row, which will have 28 half double crochets in all. Now our third row of ruffles is complete. With row 76, we'll chain two, measure out our fringe yarn, turn our work. Remember, we'll start with a half double crochet decrease, and then we'll work our way across. So in the next rows, we'll be working the first row of ruffles and the second row of ruffles, but we're all done with this third one. It's time to set you off on your own again for rows 79 through 86. You'll repeat rows 77 and 78 in that order. And just to make life easier, I've written them out here for you. Hello, hello. Now we're going to start reducing the second row of ruffles, but it's time for true confessions. I discovered that I had miscounted, so I had to frog my work like all the way back to here. <laughs> which was really frustrating. So I guess this serves as a reminder not to forget to count your work while you're focusing on making fringes and rows of different sized ruffles. I think I was even more frustrated by this because this is a pretty easy project to keep track of your stitch count. We know that there's seven stitches from the top edge to the first row of ruffles and seven between each row of ruffles. So it's just this bottom edge that you're needing to count as you work your way along. To make life a little bit easier, I put this little stitch marker here and that's just marking the most recent tens. So right now it's marking row 80. That way if I do wanna go back and double check my count, it's easy just to go back a little ways and not all the way back. And I'll just move the stitch marker up every 10th row. Okay, thanks for letting me get that off my chest. And now we can move on to decreasing the second row of ruffles. So for row 87, you'll chain two and turn. You're going to work seven half double crochets, make your first large ruffle, and then you're going to work seven more half double crochets.
and then in the second row you're going to work a medium sized ruffle. Remember you'll do this by chaining five and then working a treble in the fifth chain from your hook. There's no more third row of ruffles, so you're just going to half double crochet in each of the remaining stitches across, completing your fringe. Row 87 has a total of 22 half double crochets. Row 88 is worked in the same way of all even rows in the second half. It'll start with a half double crochet decrease instead of an increase. We're working our way back down again. It's kind of nice to have our rows getting shorter and shorter as we go. In row 89, we'll finish off our second row of ruffles. This time, you'll work across, and when you get to that second row of ruffles, you'll work a small ruffle, and then you'll finish the row. This row will have a total of 21 half double crochets. For row 90, work this row as usual. Don't forget that we're decreasing. And before you know it, you'll be at the end of the row with 20 stitches. So now our second row of ruffles is complete. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and move up the stitch marker. I will never lose count again. At least, I'll try not to. Okay, it's time to set you free from me for a few more minutes. For rows 93 through 100, you'll repeat rows 91 and 92 in that order, and I have them here for you. Welcome back once again, and now we're going to reduce our last row of ruffles. For row 101, we'll chain two and turn, half double crochet in the first seven stitches, and then we're making a medium sized ruffle. Chain five, and then work that treble stitch in the fifth chain from your hook. Then we'll finish this row by half double crocheting in each of the remaining stitches and completing our fringe. We're down to just 15 stitches in this row, so the rows are moving along even faster. For row 102, we're going to work this row as usual, and we're going to reduce by one more stitch. At the end of row 102, you will have just 14 stitches left. In row 103, we're going to reduce our ruffle to the small size. So after you half double crochet seven stitches, you'll make a small ruffle by chaining four, then working a double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook, and then you'll finish off this row. We have definitely reached the point in this tutorial where I know you know what to do. So work row 104 the way you've been working your even rows. And at the end of row 104, you'll have 13 stitches and your top row of ruffles will be complete. Finishing the scarf is going to go very quickly now because there are no more ruffles to work. For rows 107 through 128, you'll repeat rows 105 and 106 respectively. I've got them listed here for you, and I'll meet you on the last row. Here we are on row 129. You'll chain two and turn. There's only one stitch left, so you're going to half double crochet in this last stitch, which happens to be our fringe yarn and then you'll complete this fringe. Before you cut your working yarn, measure off enough length to create one last fringe with some extra for weaving in this tail end. The light is fading here in my studio, so I'm just going to pull this tail in through and start again tomorrow when I have daylight, and I'll show you how to finish off your tail end. 
Okay, let's finish our scarf. Go ahead and thread your tail end and then measure off your yarn from the end of the scarf. Go ahead and twist this last fringe. So I'm just making sure that the wrong side of my work is facing me and then I'm going to hold the twist in place right here on the very end of the scarf and then I can go ahead and weave in this tail end. Now we can cut our working yarn and then we'll ply this fringe and then we'll repeat this process for the other end of the scarf. After 129 rows of crocheting, including three special rows of ruffles, making fringe all along the way, our Regensburg scarf is now complete. I love the way it turned out in this yarn and by the way I have just under half a skein left so one skein was more than enough. The scarf is meant to be worn with the widest part of the triangle in the front and then you wrap the ends around and bring them forward. I think it looks super cute to flip over the top and have the ruffles lining your neck. It also makes it even warmer. And I also think it's a really cute look to bring the ends around front and give them a little tie. I know there's a lot going on in this pattern and I do have a PDF available for purchase in my Etsy shop if you happen to be interested. I will leave a link to the pattern in the description below. For now, I just want to say how much I appreciate your being here. If you ever crochet one of my patterns, I'd love to see your finished projects. I have my Instagram listed below. Please hit like and subscribe because it really keeps me going. I share new patterns on Tuesdays and I'm looking forward to sharing more of my designs with you. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.